you know, I, I met Steve Jobs, it was in the later part of 1983. Apple was developing the Macintosh, and I got an assignment from Rolling Stone to write a story about the Macintosh that would come out when the computer came out. And in some instances, it's remarkable, because I have a transcript of that interview, uh, to see some things he said then are remarkably consistent with the way he thinks now, particularly when it comes to things like design. In other aspects, uh, Jobs in his 20s uh, is a different than Jobs in his early 50s, as, as he is now. Uh, he's matured, he's a family guy, um, and I think he has uh, a better sense of the big picture of a company, all the little things that have to be done. Uh, but the, the things that are consistent throughout is his high standards, his uh, low tolerance for when those standards aren't met, and you know, his you know, just great sense of what people will really want and really covet and, and, and love when they have. And I think that that's something which has stood him well. And his story is one which is just unparalleled in business. I mean, how great could it be? A guy co-founds a company, gets thrown out, fired from his own company, goes off in the wilderness, buys the, 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 some other company, uh, and start, and starts another, uh, and winds up having the company he buys develop into a wildly successful movie studio, the first of its kind, and the other one gets bought by the company he got thrown out of, which he then returns to, and takes the greatest, greater heights when, when the company was just about to die. I mean, you, a Hollywood scriptwriter can't write that story. The people at Pixar proposed that story for a cartoon. They tossed them out. <laughs> you know, to, to kind of get how Steve Jobs really got to be Steve Jobs really just throws you the question, how was anyone anyone? I mean, he, from a very early age, he had this kind of charisma and sense of off-the-chart self-confidence that just, just has to be some weird brew of you know, genetics and encouragement as, as a kid, I don't know what. But you know, he's, he's really a, a, an extraordinarily, uh, you know, uh, bright and charismatic and smart and visionary person who you know, can cantankerous and sometimes difficult to get along with, uh, who's managed to set himself apart. I mean, he's uh, you know, a really remarkable uh, person who's managed to cut an amazing swath. If, if you think about it, he's done four things, any one of which would really give him his place in history. And I'm listing the Apple II, the Macintosh, Pixar and the iPod. Um, Apple came out with results just this week which showed they, they're doing better than ever on Macintosh. And that seems living proof that the halo effect from people uh, who aren't in the Apple community who buy iPods and say, hey, this is pretty good. Maybe I should check out their, their computers and see if this Macintosh, if it really is a, a better than the Windows alternative. That's happening. So you know, I, I think Apple uh, is less likely than ever to get out of the hardware market. Uh, they're creeping up in, uh, in, in, in the ratings against the most popular PC makers. Uh, yeah, there's Dell, there's HP, uh, and they're going to pass Gateway, I think, uh, in the not distant future. So I think that that model of improving their computers, and they're very, very proud of their computers, uh, and they don't want to be known strictly as an iPod company, uh, that's just going to continue.